Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode number 231 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media. And look who's back from Seoul, South Korea. None other than our good friend, the Los Angeles Dodgers, Miguel Rojas. Uh, so you just keep stamping that passport, man. That that passport must be pretty full for you, huh? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a couple uh, couple eventful uh, kind of month, you know, for me uh, definitely. Uh, first being in Venezuela, we already talked a, a little bit about that in the off season, but now uh, having the opportunity to go to uh, spring training first, and then we went to uh, Seoul, Korea, uh, the South Korea part of it. Uh, it was amazing. It was a uh, Really good trip. Uh, we enjoy as a, as a team, and I enjoy as a family as well because my family was there with me. Uh, I got the opportunity to take my son uh, um, on the on the team plane with me, so uh, it was an amazing experience. And I mean, something that I'm gonna cherish for for the rest of my life for sure. So, how did that go? Was everybody allowed to bring a person with them? Yeah, one one person with them. So uh, I decided to take my son. Uh, because my wife was going to fly separately with my daughter and, and my mother-in-law. So uh, I think it was just, you know, the right time to do it with uh, with my son. He's all enough now to understand a little bit more where he's at, you know. And uh, um, I mean, it's really special being part of this this club and this team. So uh, for me, uh, to give him that opportunity to be around so many people, uh, so many good people uh, in this organization, not just on the team, but on the front office, you know, family members, um, they treat him so well. So um, um, it was on a special flight for sure. How old is he now? Is he eight? He's eight now, yeah. I mean, how much fun <clears throat> for him to be around? Is that his first trip, like, with the big leaguers? Yeah, oh. it's actually his first trip uh, on the team plane. Um, I think uh, he always flies separately with my with my wife because, uh, I mean, we got to – we got a rule in our team that is uh, the families can fly back with you on the way back to the city, to, to L.A. So, but they can't really depart with you on the road. So when we, when we play any other city, but on the way back, yes, they can, they can be on the plane to L.A. So they can go back home with you. But um, I mean, knowing that they always in Miami, it's really hard for them to go on the trip with me and then come back to L.A. So it was the first trip, really special, uh, really long, but uh, I feel like I have my little body there to play with. We play video games. We play on the iPad. Uh, he was uh, he was watching movies with me, so it was pretty cool. That's awesome. How long is uh, and now we're getting a look at your uh, your awesome hotel hookup in the Seoul. Yeah. Was it good, yeah. was a good setup. It was a really good setup, right there, right in front, right in the middle of the city, uh, uh, kind of downtown there. there. We have a um, more it was a uh, it was pretty nice it was uh amazing the mlb and and the organization and everybody who put this trip together um they did a great job to uh make us feel comfortable make make us feel, feel safe uh for the whole families it was uh amazing transportation um uh, different ways to uh to go about uh about going to uh, on the city uh to have a couple trips here and there we went to a to a temple that is uh, pretty famous over there so uh um it was amazing. how was the baseball yeah. itself over there it was a little different for sure the way that they live it you know for the from the fan standpoint it was a little bit different because uh uh the way that they share for the players is like they're in a in this kind of party you know and they listen to the to the people who's uh who's singing the song and, and dancing uh, right on top of the dugout and they trying to chant and, and, and be there uh, for you in a different kind of way, you know? Like they pay attention to the game for sure, but they kind of like once they defense there, they want you to feel it, you know, through their, you know, the singing and uh, the way that they chant for players. So uh, it was a little bit different for sure because uh, you not used to, uh, listen to all these uh, drums and uh, people singing when you're like uh, in the middle of your bat. But it was definitely a great experience to uh, to see how they live baseball in a different country, different continent. And what they do for the players is, is really amazing. Okay. So I don't have a problem with us taking our sport and trying to grow the brand. And I think all that is wonderful. It really is. It is obviously strange to have the season start a week ahead for two mm -hmm. teams. And 
two West Coast teams at that. And you have Shohei Otani, who is changing teams. And the game starts at 3 a.m. Los Angeles time. Like, I woke up at 3.52 to go watch it, but I'm nuts. Mm -hmm. Is there a little bit where, did you guys talk at all about that as as big leaguers? Like, man, is this really smart for us to be doing? Or just kind of get your marching orders and go? Yeah, I feel like we have no saying on 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 that i feel like i mean mlb and the organization are going to do things that are uh, uh are the best for the sport and what they think is spending baseball and uh put him in a different uh part of the world and i think it's a great thing mm -hmm. but sometimes the players are the ones who are suffering the up and downs on on like a really long flight the jet lag the things that you have to do to get ready for uh for a for the start of the season when when you're not supposed to be starting the season just yet you know other teams are still getting ready still still preparing you know and you got two starters that are kind of like forcing themselves to be ready like maybe a week and a half before the mm -hmm. season supposed to be starting and they're like throwing their their like for for glasno for example he was throwing his Dodger debut not in la where he's supposed to be throwing his uh, his first star in front of his family and all that, you know, he's doing it in South Korea. So those are the things as a professional player you have to do because uh, that's your job and you have to do whatever uh, the organization is telling you to do. But at the end of the day, it's a little hard for us to uh, to get used to because uh, we will never be uh, getting used to something like that, you know, like flying overseas and, and playing all the way over there just for two games for the regular season and then coming back. It's different to do it in a different, like maybe different timing, you know, if you do it after the season's over and then you have this trip where you can actually uh, just relax, be a, be around with the family. So give the people a, a, a good show, but these games matter to us, mm -hmm. you know, and all these people is are, are trying to get a good season and good start of the season under their belt. And even when these just two games, it means a lot, you know, for a lot of people who take it really serious, and um, who cares about the results and winning games? You know, that's the most, uh, the, the, definitely the bottom line is winning those two games. That That's what we went there for. And then when you um, when you have to come back and then sit around for like another week and playing these games uh, that are, I mean, are meaningful because you're still getting ready for the season, are not counting for the, for the regular season. It's kind of weird. And... That's the things that we have to do as professionals, trying to stay on top of our stuff and trying to stay mentally prepared and ready for what's coming after, you know? Well, so I guess that was my biggest question because it was hard to see in the TV. Was the regular season intensity there? Because you are, if you were playing your games at home, you'd have 55,000 fans going nuts against the Padres. And if right. you were down at Petco, you'd have everybody, you'd have some people traveling in from LA, but you'd have a lot of people that are booing you and yelling at you and there's mm -hmm. that intensity. What, did it feel like a regular season game or not? It felt like a regular season game. It didn't feel like opening day. That's that's how it feel like it. You know what Got I mean? It. Because in opening day, you get those uh, those feelings that it's never like it, it never gets old. You know, when you get those feelings or opening day, you're kind of you know you feel the butterflies. You know that the uh, LA is gonna be packed. A lot of people is gonna be there. You know, you you're gonna see the celebrities, the festivity, the festivities. And and everything that they do for 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 opening day to feels like really special, it didn't feel that way over there. But mm -hmm. it definitely feel like it, it mattered, and the games were you know um, meaningful. So for me, playing against the Padres, that is a team that we it kind of rivals, you know, in mm -hmm. our division, and we always go against them in in, in their really good battles between uh, us two. And being so close here, you know, a lot of fans travel either direction you know san diego or la there's going to be a lot of fans on the stands um i'm not going to say that it didn't feel that it was a, a regular season game but it didn't feel like opening day for sure okay all right more miggy Rowe coming your way but first los angeles baseball today is coming at you live for our first ever event that's right floof and rose together at boomtown brewery before the Padres and Dodgers game on Friday, April 12th. There's general admission and a limited number of VIP tickets available as well. VIP admission starts at 4 o'clock, general admission following at 5. The free Dodger Stadium Express shuttle is also within walking distance to the venue if you're going to the game afterward as well. If you're looking for tickets, they can be purchased at shop.johnboymedia.com. We cannot wait to see you there. 
Lou's told me he's actually willing to take some photos on top of it. So it's a live edition of baseball today. There's a Q&A as well. And if you get those VIP tickets, you get a free drink as well, which is sometimes what you need to ingest in order to listen to some of the stuff that we talk about. We'll see you then. Uh, while you were over there, I will wake up one day and I get a text that says, look at this. Mm-hmm. And it's the clip of Jazz Chisholm going on a very popular podcast that's run by three former NFL players called The Pivot. And I watched it, and it talked specifically about you without ever mentioning your name. When did you become aware that something was going on? Yeah, that that, that same morning. It's, it's different because, uh, I mean, the time different and all that, but I, I, I woke up with the news that, that 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 was going on uh in on the east easter you know east coast so uh a couple of a uh, couple of media members sent it to me uh that I used to work in miami uh my agent obviously sent it to me and a couple of family members sent it to me so that's that's what kind of bothers me you know I, I i didn't care and i don't care about the comments of what uh one person on or or people have um of me because uh, every everybody is entitled to have their own opinion on you as a player, as a teammate, as a leader, whatever you want to say about me as a as a player. And the Miguel Rojas that that wear the uniform that he was wearing at the moment that it was the Marlins uniform, or trying to be a leader in a clubhouse, you can have that that opinion. But you saying that I'm a bad person when you don't even know me. You don't even, you don't even know where I come from. You know, you don't even part of like what's close to me, or have the opportunity to sit down with me and and getting to know me as a person. That's kind of what bothers me. And what bothers me is family asking me what's going on, and asking me what what like what make him have that like opinion of you other than in baseball, you know? Like, you can think that I suck at baseball, that I'm not a good player, that I'm not a good leader. But when you cross a line and say that I'm not a good person and I'm I'm there just because of, I guess he's thinking I'm, I'm, I'm telling someone that I'm supposed to be there and please keep me here so I can be a, I can be a major league baseball player for 10 years. That's what kind of bothers me. Let me tell you something. In a clubhouse, there's things that never should leave the clubhouse. You know, I'm not going to I'm not going to sit down and talk about things that happen in a clubhouse where if we want people to access to, to that information, we will let them be in the clubhouse. Not everybody can be in the clubhouse. That's why that's our house. That's where things happen. And remember, in a clubhouse, we got more than 30 people having life and living life for a long period of time. Not everybody's going to like everybody, you know? Not everybody. I'm not expecting everybody to like me, and I don't like everybody. But that doesn't mean that I, I, I can go out there and tell everybody what's happening in the clubhouse. I think that's one of the things that, uh, that it really bothers me because uh, as a professional, you have to understand that you have to respect everybody that is in that clubhouse and – there's things that happens there that should never leave there. And the other point that I have to make about it is all I hear someone that it was responsible for you not having the years that you saw. So is it my fault that you got hurt? Is it my fault that you didn't have the year that you want that you want to have? Is it my fault that the young players and the rookies didn't perform the way that uh that they supposed to be the, to be performing? Or is the veterans for guys who are there for the first time are not performing the way that they supposed to be performing, or are not having place even before they got there? So that's something that you have to kind of respect when you come to a place and you get to a new place. You know that they ha- they 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 be, they're people there that been there be- before you, and even if you don't want to and you don't feel like it's right have to respect the, the house that you're coming in, you know, until like you show or you uh or you earn the way that you earn 
things that can make you change whatever is going on. You gotta understand that when you come into a place, there's rule in place and someone is gonna keep you accountable. And that's that's all that, that the best we're trying to do. Keep, keeping people accountable for their actions because we have uh, rules in place. One, putting the rules in place, it was the organization. The organization have some rules there that people have to follow. That's it. Nobody's talking about having fun or, 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 or uh, uh, nobody was there like policing the phone or not letting anybody uh, uh, celebrate or whatever. I don't know when this like become a celebration thing because uh, nobody cares about what you do on the field. I just care about people respecting everybody in the clubhouse and making that, that place a good place to go to work every single day. That was a, all, all I care about. So for me, what I take from those comments is complaining about something so you can make an excuse about what happened and finding a people that was responsible for the other things that you want to accomplish. That's all I have to say. So, okay, there's a lot there, obviously, Maggie. But I think the way he painted it was it was these old guys and they weren't letting the young guys have fun, right? That's the way it was painted. And I don't know who hit the home run and did the Soto shuffle and all that sort of stuff. But I've heard this stuff for years that like, yeah, when you, when you come into the league and you hit your first or second homer, yeah, you should, you shouldn't be shuffling quite yet. Maybe if you do it for a year consistently, you hit 30 homers, go do your thing. So that did take place that where you went over to a young guy and you were like, Hey, listen, slow your roll. Don't do that. No. And that wasn't me. That was another veteran. And I'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna mention names or anything, because uh, I I wasn't the only the only old player there or the veteran there, you know. I was one of the the leaders of the team, just because I've been there for a long time, you know. And like I don't I don't really wanna I, that's that wasn't my job. My job was playing short, you know. We just want to keep everything like not in order because that's not our job. Our job is not keeping everything in order. We just want to for the young players and the guys who are coming in the league be hate by just because they're doing stuff that you don't supposed to do. And you think they are the first ever players to be to be rookies in the league and be treated this way? Like you have to you have to know that there's players before you that they be that they've been treated the same way. It's worse. It's the worst thing and that's that's that don't that don't give them a reason to go in a podcast and talk about the, the, the veteran players and what they did to them. You know? They're like those two guys or those three guys or those four guys who are who were the, the, the rookie guys on the league on, on, on our team. They were the first guys getting like some kind of uh, treating by veteran players. Like no one ever like did that before to uh, to a rookie player. I mean, it's something that we just trying to uh, we just trying to make them understand that there's gonna be time for everything, you know. And that take place, yeah. Jesus Sanchez hit a homer when uh, when he got to the big leagues, and then two days later we seeing this guy shuffling and and doing the the sort of shuffle. And it's something that, yeah. I mean, do whatever you wanna do. We are just telling you that it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be better if you just take care of your business and be yourself and go out there and focus on what you need to focus on, which is playing baseball and performing. You know, okay. that's it. I appreciate the clarification there. Um, the other one was the sleeping thing, and I had to laugh at that. I, <laughs> Miggy, I had to laugh at that. That's like my kid yelling at me saying, hey, you know what? I had school this morning at 8.30. Why didn't you wake me up? Well, shit, you got an iPhone, right? It was my job when I was 18 years old to get myself up, too. So is it protocol to have to go wake up your teammates if they're sleeping through a meeting? I don't I don't even remember that happening, to be honest with you. I don't I don't remember what I what I was or or if that if that really happens. But um, so that clip that clip surprised you hearing that. I mean it nothing surprised me about uh about what what it, what he had to say. But the thing is uh 
uh, I mean, it's not it's not my job. Like I say again, it's not my job to wake you up if uh, if you feel like I if I'm if I'm a bad teammate or a bad of I don't wake you up to go to a meeting. Is uh, I mean, it's not it's not on me. You know, you, I have uh, I have two sons. I have one son and one daughter, and uh, I mean those are my responsible my responsibility. So I'm not uh, I'm not there to like uh, trying to tell anybody what to do or or the 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 places that they need to be at the time that they need to be. So um, I'm that's that's what I'm like. That's what I was talking at the beginning. Uh, those are things that happen in a clubhouse and will never that should never like leave the clubhouse. Not everybody here or or anywhere should know about someone like missing the meetings or whatever you know like that's something that um should stay in the clubhouse and should should stay between us you could have aired him out i mean you've been on this podcast every month since we started the show you could have and we we talk about everything you could have come yep. out and said something you chose not to and i will never do it because uh that's how that's how I am, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about anything that that happens in a clubhouse because uh, uh, things that happen in the clubhouse nobody nobody should know about. Okay, I got two other quick things because I know that, and we appreciate your honesty here. You know, yeah, I, I, I'm sure it's not comfortable, but thank you. Number one is, how would you like it to end with Chad with Jazz? Would you like to have a conversation with him at some point once? This kind of settles down. Would you like to be able to sit down with him and talk things through? No, I'm not because uh, as soon as you have the the kind of assumption on me and the way that the person that I am, I don't like. I don't. I'm. I'm not. I'm not up to having a a person like in my life or anything that uh that thinks that I'm a bad person or a or a piece of shit. Okay. And the last thing is, what sort of support did you receive, whether it was from your teammates, because everybody's got social media, everybody has, everybody has access to those clips, or former teammates, or did you, did you get messages of encouragement from people that it made you kind of feel good about the situation? This is, this is all I have to say about that, Chris. And, and the people that I care about, they're on my side, and they're with me, and they know who I am. So I wasn't looking for like any kind of support because uh, – like I didn't, I didn't really care, and I didn't ask for this attention. You know, it sucks that it happens because uh, I mean, I my name, I I don't want my name ever to be uh, involved with something like this. You know, but uh, the people that I care about, I hear from them, and they know who I am, and that's uh, that's the people that I really care about what they're they're thinking. So the people that I care about, they know who I am, and they know me really well. And that's that's what I really care about. That the people that I that I I value their opinion, they uh, they reach out to me and they uh, they talk to me uh, about the things that they think about me. Good. This has been emotional for you, hasn't it? Uh, a little bit because, like I say, I don't want to be involved on things that are like, especially stuff off the field. I always try to be um, like take care of the things that I need to take care of. So I don't have any kind of things out there to be talking about me or about about Miguel Rojas off the field. You know, I, I always try to be a professional and I've been trying to uh, um, take care and, and be careful with the things that I do off the field. You know, not 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 like not to have anything uh, out there on the on the on the public or on the media that is about me, you know, and I've been trying to, uh, to be really careful about that and just focus on, on what I need to do to be a base, a, a good baseball player and to help a team win and, and do the things that I, I wanted to do. And I mean, there's, there's gotta be a reason why I am playing for Los Angeles Dodgers right now on one of the best teams ever assembled, um, in, in the history of baseball, you know, uh, and I'm not here just because, and I'm sorry, about my language because I'm, you know, I'm kissing someone ass. That's uh, that's my point of view. You know, I'm here because I've been working really hard uh, since I was like really little. You know, and uh, playing baseball for me is being uh, 
it's been a challenge because uh, you're always trying to accomplish something and get better, you know? And I feel really proud of the way that I've been uh, handling myself on and off the field and the way that I've been a professional, learning from a uh, couple of the best people that I ever uh, meet in my life. I meet them in baseball. Uh, I got to say thank you to, to them right now. Like, you know, Adrian Gonzalez, Martin Prado, um, guys of that caliber kind of taught me how to be a professional, how to handle myself on and off the field. Um, and those guys will be, I, I know that they, they, they're proud of me and I'm here in baseball and I've been playing for 11 years in the big leagues and I am probably going to accomplish something this year. And, um, later in July, it's going to be happening. Uh, I'm going to get my 10th year service of, of uh, 10, 10 years of service time uh, in the big leagues. And I didn't do that because um, I, think, yeah, I did that because of hard work and trying to get better every single day. Uh, I don't care what people have to say about my game. Not everybody have to know, have to like my game, have to like me as a player. But uh, the, old, the whole thing I have to say is that uh, that I I know what I have right now is because I work hard and I deserve every every part of it. Sure as hell do. Good. Thank you yep. for uh, sharing all that. Um, last year, Gavin Lux was supposed to be the starting shortstop on the team, and something really bad happened to him in spring training. And your role, you took on a t- an entirely different role. This year, Gavin Lux was supposed to be the starting shortstop on the Dodgers, and he's had some – so they have moved him to second base. Last year, I came to the organization knowing that I was a, that I was going to be like a utility guy, you know, and I, I was going to have the utility role, and I end up playing a lot, you know. I end up playing a lot of shortstop, and, uh, I mean, for me, um, that, was a, that was a great uh, opportunity. Uh, for me to show them that I can do that, you know, and for me to show them that I can help the team uh, be a competitor every single day, you know, and we got the opportunity to win a hundred games last year. We couldn't do it in the fall season, unfortunately, but um, I feel like um, I did everything that I can, you know, to make them feel comfortable that they have a shortstop that they can feel in, in the position, not just for a couple of days or for a couple of weeks, but for the full season, you know, I play over 130 games last year, and I feel like I did a pretty good job defensively. And uh, offensively, I helped the way that, uh, that I that I could have done it, you know. And um, even when I felt like I, I could have done better, um, it was a year that, uh, you know, like I helped a lot on my on my defensive uh, performance and my my war and my numbers were up, you know. Um, so uh, with, with that being said, I feel like uh, they always wanted to give uh, Luxie a really good opportunity and a, good, a really good chance to play in the big leagues and playing every day, you know? Uh, we all like his bat, and we all like uh, the way that he's going to contribute to this team. Unfortunately, he got the, the, the surgery last year, and yeah, that's a really tough surgery, you know? When you're coming back from a knee surgery and imagine how hard it is to trust yourself again, you know, and be yourself again, and it's really hard to do it on the fly, knowing that his spring training is going to, it was going to be short. and um, um, we all know that the organization was going to give him the opportunity to play every single day. So for me, it wasn't a surprise that I wasn't, that I'm not starting a short right now because, uh, I mean, that's how it was, uh, was going to play out, you know? Even a short or second, he was going to play every day, you know? And then Mookie just have to move from one spot to another and he have to play short because we all know he's capable of, you know? And last year he shows that he is capable of playing short and this is something that I, I think with his work ethic and the things that, that he do every single day to get ready for a game, he can do, you know? And then that's that's why for, for me, it wasn't just a surprise that that I didn't receive the opportunity to play short um, every day uh, because that was my role. My role was going to be uh, playing different parts on the, uh, on, on the field. Um, and then if something happened to plug me in whenever they feel like they need me. So, to 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 give you a short answer, no, I wasn't I wasn't upset that I was that I wasn't getting the opportunity to play short because I know there's a plan behind 
uh, what everything that they do here in this organization. What is Mookie's biggest challenge being an everyday shortstop? I think he's really aware of uh, uh, that a shortstop receive a lot of um, opportunities, you know, during a game. And there's different balls that he's not used to kind of uh, make plays on because it's really hard, you know, because you, it, it, shorts that give you a variety of options, you know, to go to your left, to your right. You have to have a strong arm. You have to use your legs in every ball that you do. Uh, you have to be involved in a lot of plays. You have to be mentally kind of um, involved on every play on the field. So for me, it's that. It's, it's Mookie's been working really hard on on his mechanics, his, you know, how to catch a ball, how to throw the ball. But I feel for me, what gives giving giving the more challenge is uh, the place that he's gonna that he's gonna have in the season that he's not gonna feel comfortable on. He's gonna work really hard on them, you know, and he's gonna be hard on himself because I know how kind of competitive Mookie is, and he's gonna be working really hard until he finds a way to feel comfortable with that play, with that ep specific play. So, uh, to put an example, the other day. Um, he didn't make an error, but he kind of misplayed a ball that it was hit to him over there in Korea. And he's been working so hard to feel comfortable and finding something that, like, replicate what that ball was mm -hmm. in practice so he can get better at it. So he gets so consumed about how I'm going to be ready if this ball is hit to me again. And that's the thing that uh, kind of shortstop presents you that challenge because you get so many different balls every single day. How do you, though, um, you, you're one of the great glove men in the league. How do you decide what's too much information to, to share with Mookie and saying, okay, I want to help you out? Like, how do you figure out the balance? It's, it's funny that you asked that question because we was just talking about it yesterday. And uh, so he told me at some point when we were working together, he told me, why you didn't tell me that before? And I say, Mook, the way that this is going to work is um, I'm not going to throw, throw stuff at you until you feel like you need me to help you. You know, if you ask me for some advice or for, for some kind of uh, experience, kind of wisdom about what did I do in this situation in the past? Because I've been playing shortstop my whole life. It's not it's not just the, the time that I've been in the big leagues. I've been playing shortstop like since I was five years old. So for me, it's uh, how we're gonna how we're gonna build the relationship of me helping Mookie is whenever he feels like he needs um, a little bit of uh, maybe direction or or an advice with with a, a play or the way that he's um that he's is in like staying on the field or or the way that he's setting his feet the way he's pre pitching uh, getting ready for a pre pitch he's going to he's going to come to me and probably asking me how did i do that what did i do to help me with that situation with this ground ball what did i think when i was playing short to keep me loose or in this situation when it's a crunch time in the game in the ninth inning, what did I tell myself before? So that's how I, I feel like I'm going to be beneficial for him and instead of me coming every single day with a plan for him because he already have his, you know, all his things that he has to do and the things that, that are on his mind, I don't want to be someone putting something else on him. I'm just going to I just gonna wait until he needs kind of um, – some support or some advice or some experience kind of um, worse so I can I can be uh, helpful for him. Great. You know, he's he's got kind of a popular baseball podcast, too. He has big yeah. name guests on. And during spring training, he had Dansby Swanson of the Cubs on. And I don't know if you heard this, but uh, it's kind of cool. You know who one of my favorite shortstops, and I get to watch him every day? Miggy Rojas. Miggy Rojas is electric. He's got some unbelievable hands. Not bad. Yeah, and especially coming from a uh, dance B that I kind of um, admire, you know, and uh, respect a lot coming coming from them, that they play the game. They uh, they see it every single day. They see a lot of people. They see a lot of players. They see a lot of shortstop. 
for them to say that about me and uh knowing that I've been working hard to uh to deserve that and to earn that you know is uh is pretty special um and, and Mookie and I we have developed a really good relationship on and off the field these last couple of years and um I mean I talked to him yesterday about that I, I want to be here for him but I don't want to be intrusive of his uh his work you know because his work I think is one of the things that I that I, I admire the most about him and uh I just I just want to be an access for him to actually come to me and and ask me any questions that he he wants or he needs from me and uh the the only thing that I can do is be there for him if he ever needs a a guy that go out there and catch ground balls with him so we've been working really hard especially in my new role right now my new old role you know because mm -hmm. I came to the league being a defensive replacement and right. and being a guy who plays uh lane games um i feel like i have an opportunity to work a little bit more my routines have changed a little bit just because um uh, i have more time and uh i'm not playing every single day so i i don't have to like kind of um reserve my energy that much so i'm out there with mookie every single day taking grounders doing early work um and that way he can see the way that i do it and if he can pick some things out of that i think it's, it's great and i mean if we don't talk much at least he's, he's watching and and I'm watching him and I feel like if if I see something there here and there I will tell him but uh, at the at the end of the day I feel like he has he is himself you know and he's Mookie and Mookie Betts can do it all <laughs> he, he certainly can he's right amazing um <laughs> I mean think about it he's gone from gold glove right fielder to second base to now shortstop of you know baseball's premier team uh, has Dave talked to you like are you going to be a ninth inning shortstop replacement and then Mookie moves over to second do we know how that's going to work Yeah I mean how how do how do you know this are you uh, are you having I mean, I, a wait, now, now, really, now hold on really here, Mickey, bro. hold <laughs> on let me let me just throw a little shine over here yeah, I am a me. terrible terrible athlete probably one of the five worst athletes on the entire planet but you're really good at what you do I, yeah. I appreciate that. But I love <laughs> the sport. So yeah. I'm just thinking here, right? You to me is is that the way it's gonna go? You, and you don't even have to do that sport to be a good manager, you know? Or a, well, a good coach. Hey, I don't want to take you, anybody's job. I'm happy being the dad of John Boy Media. That's good. Hey, enough. it's so it's okay. When I'm when I'm managing in the big leagues, you're probably gonna have a spot on my team. I I love you this. know what's going on, you know? I, I, am I? Are you talking about bench coach material? Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe not bench coach, but we have this uh, um, speed coach uh, that 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 kind of deal with analytics, have uh, a little bit of uh, experience in in baseball, mm -hmm. and combine all that together. Mm. I feel like, hey, that's that can be a position for you there. You know, okay. I don't want to take a pay cut though. I can't take a pay cut. No, 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 no. I've had enough We're of those in my career. <laughs> we're not taking pay cuts okay. for sure but uh yeah um yeah that's that's how it's gonna work uh i'm gonna be uh i'm gonna be defensive replacement late in any in laying games when the game are are close you know um and then you know you know how they do things here uh they pinch it and they they kind of uh play the matchups you know like i'm probably gonna be pinching against some left-handed pitching mm -hmm. and then i'm gonna stay in the game but then bottom line if we have the lead laying games winning by one, two runs, or the game is tied or whatever, um, I'm going to be playing short. Mookie is going to move to second, and we're going to play uh, uh, short and second that way. So essentially what they told me is when I'm in the game, I'm playing shortstop. And then Mookie is willing to uh, to move around and bounce around a little bit uh, when, he's, uh, when he's laying games. He's going to play second too. So uh, I think in our exhibition game today, I'm playing short, Mookie's playing second. So we're gonna we're gonna get uh, some work done here there, um, so he can get ready for second base as well because it's that's something that is not easy to do and people need to understand that that for a for the caliber of player who Mookie Bet, Mookie Betts is, um, it's not just an all star or a great player or whatever. He's an MVP candidate every single year. You know, for him to be willing to move in the middle of spring training from second base to shortstop and do it on the fly and 
have the desire not just to be a shortstop, but be one of the best shortstop that he can be and do everything that he's doing for the team to feel comfortable and know that the team going to have the best team out there. That's an unselfish player doing the best for the team and not the best for himself. Because uh, if you think about it, there's a lot of things out there, a shortstop that you have to care and you have to, you have to be thinking about that. You have to be thinking about defense. You have to be working extra hard. And that's going to take a task on his body. And he's taking the challenge of doing that for the best of the team. So you have to understand that it's not easy for a superstar like Mookie Betts to be jumping around. And we all appreciate that. The organization do, players do, his teammates are going are gonna to appreciate that. But that's something that has got to come from the player. And he's, he's willing to do it. And we all, we all have to say, man, thank you for, for what you do for the team. Well, I mean, none of this surprises me. Um, back when I did intentional talk, Malar and I were doing a live show, I want to say from Yankee Stadium. And they were taking on the Red Sox. So this is, I'm going to guess, 2014, 15, whatever year it was. So Mookie was a young player, but he was already Mookie. He was already mm-hmm. starting to be Mookie. I don't know what year. It was. We get there at 2 o'clock. So this is three hours before our show. And set and five hours before first pitch, he is one of two guys taking early batting practice. And it's not like he was struggling. He was freaking like one of the best players in the league. And I remember a Yankees coach coming out here and saying, Jesus Christ, like it's not enough that the guy is great. Like when first pitch happens, he's here five hours in an empty stadium. Like that's just who he is, man. And yeah. none of this that you're saying surprises me because he wants to be great. I suppose. The question I got, can he win a gold glove there? A short? Yeah. It's too early. It's too early for me to say that. I have to, yeah, I need to be, yeah, even when I, when I believe on him and, 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 and all that, and I want to, I want to say, yes, yeah, of course he can win a gold glove there. I need to be, you know, like a uh, professional with what I say and uh, just wait to, to watch him play a little bit more. And see how the he, he develops. But uh, what I can tell you is that he can get the job done, and he's going to be a great shortstop. Great, good enough. Let me talk Otani, sure. and we're going to be honest here. Uh, we're taping this on a day where Shohei Otani is finally speaking to the media following um, gambling accusations against his friend and former interpreter. Um, so um, it's not fair me, for me to ask, well, what do you think happened? Because none of us freaking know. So we're not doing that. What I am going to do is ask you what the hell it has been like being Shohei Otani's teammate, because it must be insane, and you haven't even gotten into the good stuff yet. Yeah, now being being his teammate is the only thing that I can talk about because I don't know anything um, that happens. I mean, no, no, nobody even knows, you know. And right. um, but yeah, being his teammate, we you, you just you just feel like the guy have everything. Um, on his head right now and on his back. You kind of feel bad for him right now because uh, uh, he has to be dealing with uh, coming to a new organization and and uh, trying to perform, trying to uh, uh, get ready for next year. And his, uh, his pitching and his throwing program, he's going to, I think he started that a couple of days ago. Um, you have to worry about like having a good elbow, playing good, performing well, and having all this attention uh, around you, the good attention around you on the on the team coming to a, a a new team, a new organization, trying to perform and trying to help this team get to where we want to go. And then on top of that, you have to deal with all the media attention as well on the negative side of everything that is happening. I, I feel for him, man. It's really hard. And I mean, it takes a, it takes a really special individual to go through that and like still go out there every single day and play the game. What do you think it's going to be like, though, traveling from city to city? Let's whatever's going to happen with, with this gambling issue is going to happen. But just about being around Shoh- Shohei Otani, we're not talking about just the face of baseball. Like he is a global sports icon that you get to play with. Yeah, I can already, I can already feel how it's how it's like. Uh, we went to South Korea, and uh, I mean, from the airport to the bus uh, station that we picked the bus, 
to the entrance of the hotel, to the hotel lobby, everywhere. There's people everywhere waiting on him. Kind of, yeah, they're waiting on the Dodgers and, and the Padres too. But don't get me wrong. It's like he's the, the, the main attraction, you know? Everybody's waiting on him. Cameras everywhere. Like everywhere you go, you get that kind of attention that sometimes you don't ask for. You know, when you sign a minor league deal and, and, and all that, you're probably not going to ask for, hey, I want all these people being on top of me and being on top of the world. Sometimes things just happen to, to, a, to a person and it takes a lot of, a lot of energy and a lot of uh, uh, professionalism to, uh, to go through that. And I'm already feeling how it's going to be because uh, it, was, it was crazy when we get to, uh, to South Korea. I, I never seen something like that. Sure. Are you kidding me? It's uh did you see that he makes I think he makes more than sixty million dollars a year off of the field. That's what I that's what I hear. Uh Woo! and it's amazing. He's in uh he's in billboards in and big billboards in the street. And this uh you know, South Korea is like really like um they're like in the future on, on technology. And they have all these like um like billboards that go from from baseball to uh, to uh, skincare and and all that, and he's uh, he's doing one that is pretty um, it's pretty funny and uh, it's it's cool too because he's he's coming from like running and he have his his New Balance kind of deal now that he have his uh, his own logo, you know, and he's the logo of kind of New Balance baseball, so he's uh, he's having his logo there and he's running. And then the next billboard goes uh, him like being a handsome young fella, just uh, like promoting a skincare uh, <laughs> product. So uh, it was funny because Kike, Kike got to run by the by the billboard and he sent a big a video uh, in a group chat and uh, 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 show him just a uh, reply stop. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's because uh, I mean, it's a uh, it's a lot of things that you have to do, you know. And it, your team is probably gonna gonna have fun with you and with all that. But I mean, it's it's amazing. It's a it's a great time to be a Dodger right now and and being part of a, a history like this. How uh, I heard that he knows Spanish. How is his Spanish? His Spanish, uh, I don't I don't know how good it is. Uh, I talk to him in English most uh, mm. mostly. You know, yeah. He uh, he How, knows really good English. He's a, how's he's his a, English? He's, yeah, his English is pretty good. I feel like uh, I don't know if it's because of you know the years that he's been here mm -hmm. and uh, talking to his teammates and uh, and and being all around uh, uh, baseball and uh, having to uh, to do a lot of interviews and he's like listening to to stuff. But his English is pretty good. I think it's decent. He's uh he's speaking with me that uh um. Every time that I that I want to talk to him, I don't I don't use an interpreter. You know, I go to him and I I talk to him about whatever we want to talk about, and uh, he's really he's really good at like coming back to the dugout and telling telling his teammates what pitcher what pitch that the pitcher is throwing and all that. And we all know like this is universal language. You know, like we don't we don't really know uh, need to talk English to uh, to talk about you know stuff uh, about the game, but uh, he's really good. I think it's it's kind of kind of decent in english for sure does he ever shit talk he ever... yeah he's uh he's really funny actually oh. he's uh yeah he uh, he made comments in the like heaters <laughs> meeting uh when he don't know anything about the picture he makes a a funny comment here and there um makes everybody laugh <laughs> really sneaky because uh he's always quiet you know he's always like on the back just listening but uh when he makes a comment he uh he kind of he kind of show that he's uh it's pretty fun. Uh, just one or two more things, and I'll let you go play a shortstop to Mookie's second base. Um, yeah. Been a uh, interesting run for Yamamoto so far. Not a great spring training for him, stats wise. Nobody really cares about that stuff. But he only made it one inning in his major league debut over in Game Two in in South Korea. Do Dodger fans have to be more patient than perhaps they are willing to be with the richest pitcher in the history of the sport? Um, yeah, I, it, it's tough for me to talk about like pitching or what's going on with him right now or, or mechanics or, or if it's, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that you have to put in perspective here, you know, 
Like he's coming to a new country, pitching in a new league with a new baseball. And you don't even know how different it is from like the baseball, the rosin back, the, the, the stadiums, the atmosphere, everything that you're living is different, you know? And you're trying to, um, you're coming to a new organization that is going to throw things at you too, you know, and you have to catch it on the fly, trying to adjust, you know, like maybe, uh, maybe thinking that in spring training you're tipping, you're, you're letting your, uh, the opposition know that you're, like you're doing something with your glove that is uh, exposed, exposing your split finger or exposing your fastball, and then you're thinking about that. It, there's a lot of things. It's like to, to be honest with you, we have to wait, wait and see what's going to happen and what's going to transpire. Let's give him the, like, the benefit of the doubt of the first, first, first starting in, in Major League Baseball. He was kind of nervous too, you know? He had to be nervous. Even when, you know, he won at all, in, in Japan for like, I don't know how many MVPs, how many Cy Jones over there, or the best pitcher in the league. You can have all that. But you're coming to a different league where you're playing with different uh, kind of players and they don't care about like what you do over there. We don't care about like your stats or your career or anything that you do there in Japan. We care about what you're going to do here and they're going to face you like you with any other pitcher in this league. So you have to give them the benefit of the doubt to go out there and show what he can do in a long run and give him a couple more starts so you, so you start, like, taking conclusions because uh, um, first, first start he could have been a little bit nervous. Um, I don't know, the baseball, the preparation for the first start, you know, uh, in South Korea, he having not even pitching – in America yet, so let's let's wait and see what happened with him. But there's a lot of there's a lot of things and a lot of pieces to the puzzle that I still need to see uh, following in order for me to take a, a, an early conclusion on him. I'll tell you this though, it looks like he's got great hair. I mean, the hair. Oh is yeah, down, he's got looks like he's got some style and some you know right. All that seems on point. On point, I think uh, his style. I'm trying to pick on 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 some things that he's wearing too. He's he's uh Whoa. really good off the field, really good. He he having these uh hangbacks, um, um, so he got a lot this designer handbags that looks like woman's back. Uh-huh. But I like the style, and I think I'm gonna get on it. I think you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna see me in couple pictures rolling into the stadium, you know, with a handbag, and I'm gonna get it from from Shohei. Well, that's, from, here's from, the deal, uh, J- Yoshi. Listen. I, I don't care, you know, Shohei seems like a great dude. You got to sit near him on the bus because you got to walk in with him. If you want to, if you want people to start taking pictures, like, Who is that? <laughs> yeah, who's that well-dressed guy that's near Shohei? <laughs> like, if you want to show your shit off, walk near yeah, Shohei. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You walk, you walk next to Shohei when, uh, when you walk out of the bus or when you come coming in, uh, in the lobby, yeah. you're going to get a lot of pictures. So, uh, I'm probably gonna start doing that. Thank you for oh man. Thank you for the tip, Rosie. Yeah. Appreciate By the it. way, <laughs> God, I you know what? I made a mistake. I didn't bring in my newest pair of uh of ones of Jordan's. Oh yeah, you got you got a you got a lows or, or highs? Low. Everything's low with this guy. Yeah. I can't I can't do high. I've got fat ankles or something like that. So <laughs> my my wife is upping my game though. You would be very, okay. very proud. Like, you know, I'm getting there. I'm, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I like what, what color. What color do you go to? Uh, they're they're brown. Uh, they got some brown okay. in them. Yeah, they're they're nice. She did a really really good. She got them for my birthday. Like I don't nice. get myself anything, as you can tell. I've been wearing the same t-shirts for about. Three years. <laughs> so, no, that's that's, that's awesome. That's that's good that you have a little bit of a rotation there. I yeah. like it. Um, yeah, I like it. Love I'm, it. I'm, yeah, I feel good. I feel a little sexier when I wear them. So that's nice. Great. Uh, it was great catching up with you. Listen, and I know that we're whatever. It's my job to ask questions. You, We have built a really nice friendship here in, in several years, and I appreciate it. And I know that this stuff was uncomfortable today. It was important for you to address it. I'm thankful that you did. And I could see it in your eyes that it, you hate it. You hate it. You hate it. You hate it. Now we're done with it. It's over. Yep. Okay. No, yeah, for sure, and and I appreciate you, uh, Chris, because uh, you're giving me the opportunity to have this 
this floor right here and it's always it, it's always feel like um if i have something to say <clears throat> i would say here because this mm -hmm. is our you know this is our show and right that's when we talk as 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 humans you know other than than just baseball and that's why we're doing this right so uh, it, we brother. can uh, we can we can tell the people our our point of view and i appreciate you for uh, for reaching out too and um uh, handling the right way and john boy media too uh thank you guys for for not jumping in any conclusion conclusions after after that came out uh and i appreciate that because a lot of people out there just uh just use that as a you know as an opportunity to get likes and that's something that i really hate about too you know like people just uh just using that for you know in the in the benefit of their their own uh, things and instead of like think about the, the players or the person that are are gonna are, are gonna be involved in this uh this kind of rumors so thank you guys you got it have a great start to your season we'll check in uh, in a few weeks and uh tell all those dudes we say hello okay yeah for sure thank you very much and looking forward to see you uh around dodger stadium more and more and you, i know you guys gonna do baseball today uh live right yeah, we're One doing it. Days. Yeah, we're doing it uh two weeks from Friday at Boomtown Brewery in Los Angeles, right before the Dodgers and Padres game. So come down and nice. see our first ever in-person live edition of baseball today. Plus, we've got a QA. You get to, hey, you get to take pictures with Trevor Plouffe. I mean, who ah. wouldn't want to do that? That's a great opportunity right there. That's a low price, like my friend Kick said. Yeah. <laughs> low, low, the low, low price of whatever the heck we're charging. So make sure you come out and see right. us. Uh, we hear ticket sales are going great, but there's still tickets left. So so go do that as well. Uh, for our amazing producer, Robbie Scirocco, and our good friend, Miguel Rojas of the Los Angeles Dodgers, who will be coming in as a late inning defensive replacement sometime near you. I am Chris Rose. We will see you next time here on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.